It is the fifth and final Sunday in Lent. We started way back with the first Sunday, obviously, with uh, Jesus being tempted in the wilderness by Satan, and then we uh, made our way through the, the rest of the weeks, and along the way, we stopped with the, uh, the festival of uh, St. Joseph, the Garden of Our Lord, and then the, the Feast of the Annunciation, and here we are on the final Sunday in Lent, right before Holy Week, right before Palm Sunday, and we get to read and hear from Luke chapter 20, uh, starting in verse 9 on Sunday, and this is the parable of the wicked tenants. And this is where Jesus speaks about how there's this owner of a field and he lets out uh, the, the, the field to, uh, to tenants and they're supposed to uh, do good and, and, and bring up this field and then and give money back and give fruit back, but they don't want to do it. And, and the rich man sends out the, uh, the servants and they beat up the servants and they send out servants again and he beats up the servants again. And then finally he says, I know what I'll do. I'll go send my son. Surely they won't do anything. And these wicked tenants say, oh no, we will. Uh, we're going to get the inheritance for ourselves. We're going to kill the son. And the scribes and the Pharisees, they know that Jesus is speaking directly about them. And they're furious about this. They know this parable is directed against them. But at the very end, <clears throat> Jesus says, and he looks directly at them and he says, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus is talking about himself there, obviously. And then he says, Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. Now, here is Jesus speaking the, the clear reality of this situation, right? Here he has come. His whole life he's been preaching and teaching <clears throat> And now we've got the Pharisees and the scribes, and they hate him for this because it's a clear teaching of grace that saves. It's the gospel. It's Jesus. It's not works righteousness. The law will crush you, and the law accuses you, and that's what the law does. And, and here we've got Jesus speaking the truth of it, and the Pharisees and the scribes hate it. And he tells them that they're going to hate him and reject him, and throw him away, and, and the funny thing is, like, he's saying, he's laying it out here, I'm going to be rejected, the odd thing is, the actual rejection of Jesus is the crucifixion, and yet, the crucifixion is the very thing that saves, in the rejection of the cornerstone, he becomes the cornerstone, it's a beautiful thing, and then he lays it out there, and he says, okay, you're either going to fall and be broken, or you're going to be crushed. You're going to either be broken in repentance, or you're going to be crushed with the law at the end. Th those are the two kind of options. But Jesus doesn't desire the death of the sinner. He desires that all come to repentance and understanding of their sin and recognize this, and then in repentance receive this forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus came. That's why he became the cornerstone. That's why he went to the cross, that's what Lent's all about. That's what Holy Week's all about. That's what this whole Christianity thing is all about. Jesus as the cornerstone on that cross for you. He breaks you in pieces with his law, and then he builds you up, and he declares you righteous and forgiven with his gospel that he won for you on the cross. That's Lent, and it's for you. Thanks be to God. Did we do good? Is that is that Okay. If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.